I am trying to platinum and 100% every single game in the Crash Bandicoot franchise. In the last two videos, I completed the first two games in the remastered Insane Trilogy. So now it is time to move on to... It's Crash Bandicoot! Unlike the first two games, there are now 27 trophies to obtain, with 25 of them a part of the Platinum, and the final two as DLC in the Future Tense level pack. The PSM Profiles Guide gives it only a 4 out of 10 difficulty and takes about 15 hours for the base game, and the DLC Guide says it takes only about an hour and is a 3 out of 10 difficulty. This means that this third game is even easier than the first two, which is great to hear so I can have a bit of an easier time, especially before I head into Crash Bandicoot 4. No! God, please, no! 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 Anyway, let's get right into the Platinum Journey and see if it truly is that easy. Exactly like the second game, the trophies are very similar with the end goal being to collect every single crystal, all clear and color gems, and finally every single gold relic. And once again, the first stage in the trophy grind is to beat all the levels and get every crystal. And so, once again, just like the last game, there are five levels to complete before you can take on a boss, so I loaded straight away into the first level. And similar to the second game as well, you can now find these bonus paths that you can just hop on and it takes you straight away to the bonus area. And for doing this for the first time, I do earn myself the trophy taking the scenic route. Also, whilst playing this first level, I did manage to collect all the boxes and that means I got myself my first clear gem of the game. Of course, I wasn't worrying about collecting these at this stage, but it was nice to get them if it was possible. Moving on to the second level, this was the first scuba diving slash swimming level, and surprisingly enough, Crash 3 do have a lot of these levels that where it mixes up the controls and does something different. For example, on the very next level, I was forced to play as Coco, as she is the only one that can do these tiger levels, which are very similar to the polar bear levels in the second game. So I guess that is probably the reason why Crash 3 is considerably easier than the first two because a lot of these levels are these mix-up type levels where they switch up the controls and give you something different to play. It's not as hard as normal Crash platforming. Moving on to the fourth level, I managed to get that clear gem as well, so that was another one out of the way. Wouldn't have to worry about that later on. Then moving on to the fifth level, this is another vehicle or switch-up level. Again, this time you're forced to play as Coco as she's the only one that can do these jet ski levels and again these are fairly simple you can go nice and slow make sure you're collecting all the boxes so again pretty easy and you can also turn around if you stuff up and I actually did manage to get the clear gem on this level as well so that is three down already but of course the levels get harder as the game goes on so the first five ones are fairly simple it's only gonna get harder from here that being said with those five levels done I did unlock the first boss of the game against tiny tiger and and once again, just like in all the other Crash games, the boss fights are of course easier than the actual levels themselves, so it didn't really have that much of a struggle against Tiny Tiger. And so after a couple of attempts, I did eventually get the trophy Tiny Trounced for defeating him. A new feature with Crash 3 is every time you beat a boss though, you unlock a brand new move to use. And so for this one, I unlocked a Super Belly Flop, which does more area damage and can destroy armored boxes. Continuing Continuing on though, I moved on to levels 6 to 10, where on level 6 I got another clear gem. On level 7 I also managed to get that clear gem. And then on level 8 I was introduced to another new type of level. This one was the motorbike levels as Crash. And these are kind of tough, the controls are hard to get used to as the turning circle can be a bit, bit wide and hard to control, uh, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. In order to get the crystal on these levels, you have to get first place, and of course if you want the clear gem, you have to get all boxes, so you pretty much have to do two separate runs, because it's kind of hard to get all the boxes whilst going for first place, because you're bound to miss some, because you're going so quick. On my first attempt, I ended up missing one box, and also coming third place, so I'm Unfortunately, I got neither the crystal or gem, so I had to restart. On my next attempt, I managed to get the clear gem, but unfortunately, I finished third place again, so I still had to get the crystal. And after that, because I didn't have to worry about getting any of the boxes, I could just go as quick as I can, and eventually, I got first place. Continuing on, I beat the final two levels before unlocking the next boss, which was against Dingo Dial. Dingo Dial. I'm a freaking Australian Dingo Dial. Now you've gone and done it. Oh, Them God. Them crystals are mine. Them crystals are mine. 
Do I really sound like that? I don't think so. So yeah, unfortunately, Dingo Dial gets the stereotypical Australian treatment with the accent and all, which, I mean, I don't sound like that, but I guess there are some Aussies out there that do. But yeah, very stereotypical. So of course, I've got to take him out. And so once again, the boss fight against him is pretty easy. Boom. The skull. Penta's Revenge. Defeat Dingo Dial. And for defeating him, I probably got the best power in the game, which is the ability to double jump. This makes completing some levels so much easier. Moving on to the next five levels, on level 12, I actually ended up getting both the clear gem and red gem. So that is the first colored gem of the game. On level 13, I also managed to get its clear gem. I then also managed to get the clear gem on level 15 as well. And then I unlocked the next boss fight against Dr. Entropy. And not gonna lie, this guy was so easy. I beat him on my very first attempt. GG's. A nefarious trophy. <laughs> Get it instead of nefarious trophy. A nefarious trophy. Okay, that's, yep, yeah, nice. And as you can see, the ability unlocked was the Death Tornado Spin, which allows you to spin for longer and also allows you to glide in the air for a bit. Moving on, level 16, I also managed to get the clear gem. And on level 17, I got introduced to another new level type, this time Crash Flying an Aeroplane. And these ones are super easy. Uh, you can take damage from these enemies, but you can also pick up health boxes as well. You can shoot out of the sky. And all you have to do is destroy blimps or whatever else, and it doesn't take very long and getting the clear gem is pretty easy as well as the boxes are very easy to see in the sky so these levels so easy that being said i actually did miss one crate on this level so i didn't actually get the clear gem but i did get the crystal so i knew i could come back to it later when i was going for the gems however on level 18 i did get its clear gem and then on level 20 i almost got the clear gem but i somehow missed one box but after completing level 20 i did unlock the next boss fight against dr engine and in this boss fight, you literally control a spaceship shooting projectiles at his mech robot. And this boss fight was actually a lot of fun, but it's very easy. There is a second phase after you destroy his mech robot. But once again, it's very easy. When you get hit, you just take damage. You don't actually die straight away. And that makes it a very easy boss fight. And mech wrecked again. Defeat engine. Let's go. Also, as you can see, I unlocked the Fruit Bazooka, which gives you essentially a gun to use on each level, and this is very helpful for taking out enemies from afar and destroying crates. Moving on, I beat levels 21, 22, and 23. I didn't get the clear gem in those, but on level 24, it was another plane level, and I managed to get all boxes getting the clear gem for this one. And then continuing on to level 25, I did also manage to get the clear gem for that one as well. And with those final five levels complete, I was now able to take on the final boss of the game, of course, once again, for the third time, Dr. Neo Cortex. And once again, just like every other boss, he is fairly easy once you know his attack patterns. And on only my second attempt, I managed to beat him. Come on, trophy? Cortex incarcerated. Defeat N Cortex. Do I jump down there as well now? Oh my god, I'm such a dummy. Why'd I just do that? Oh my... I can't believe I just did that. I can't. No. Oh, I'm a goofball. Yeah, so for some reason, I thought I had to jump down to where I literally had just defeated Neo Cortex into the hole. But in reality, there was a superpower waiting for me. And so I had to do the whole boss fight all over again, even though I already got the trophy. Pick up the running boots. Sick as. Now I can sprint. Yeah. There we go. Don't jump down the hole. That was stupid. And yes, those speed shoes are going to come in very clutch, especially for when I do the time trials. But now I can say I had officially beaten the game. So that is stage one complete. And now I could move on to stage two, which was to pick up some miscellaneous trophies. So the first one I went for was on the level tomb time. And for this one, I had to have the fruit bazooka unlocked. And then for some reason on this neocortex sphinx, there are red marks that appear allowing you to shoot it. And for doing that, you get the trophy, the riddle of the sphinx. For the next one, I went to the level G Wiz, and I simply had to die to one of the wizard's projectiles. I want to get rid of masks. I need you to kill me. Warts and all. There we go. Die. Okay, turn into a frog by the wizard. Let's go. Next trophy was similar. I went to the level Sphinxinator. 
kill me. Keeping Crash under wraps. Die. So yeah, you just have to get picked up by one of those mummies. Simple as. For the next trophy, I had to swap to playing as Coco. And from the superpower I got earlier from defeating Entropy, which was the more powerful spin, I just had to use that as Coco and defeat five enemies. There we go, category five. Defeat five enemies with Coco's savage hurricane spin. Let's go. For the next one, I went back into that same level, Toad Village, and using the fruit bazooka, I just had to shoot five chickens. And so I would die on purpose to get respawned back at the start and continuing farming that first chicken. A fruit. Oh, there we go. Trigger clicking good. Shoot five of them in a single level. For the next trophy, I made my way back to the level tomb time. And about halfway through the level, you come across a monkey hiding in some jars. And the monkey is flinging something at you. And all you gotta do is dodge those for a minute straight. Okay, so he's stopped now. Here we go. Your moment of zen. Avoid whatever he's flinging at you. Oh yeah, I just realized he's flinging crap at us, isn't he? Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. So after dealing with that crappy situation... I moved on to the trophy that is in both the previous games, which is to get the lives counter all the way up to 99. I found the best method to get this as quick as possible was to go to the level Sphinxinator, as when you spawn in, there is a life behind you, and then what you do is take the left forking path and use your spin to glide over. If you continue to follow this path, you can find four lives at the end of it. Once you've done that, you quit out of the level and head back to the main area, and you reload the save slot that you were using which allows you to keep the same amount of lives you already have and it also spawns back in the lives that you've already picked up on that same level so essentially you're getting five lives every single time you do this level so it is still a bit time consuming it probably took me about 20 minutes doing this method so not as quick as the previous games but it's the quickest you possibly can to get this done come on give me the trophy a stitch in time saves 99, earn 99 lives, let's go. For the next trophy, I headed to the level Boneyard as I already picked up the red gem earlier because on this level is where you use that red gem path. A cut above the rest. Discover a gem path after earning a colored gem, let's go. For the next trophy, I headed to the level High Time, because on this level there is a no death route, which means you have to get to that place in the level without dying in order to access that route. So it's pretty much a bonus path, but you can't just get into it for free, you have to not die until you get to it. This is the death route. Not a scratch. Give it time. There we go, discovered a death route. Next up, I headed to the level Road Crash, and early on in this level, you can see a blue bird fly into a sign with an alien face on it, and if you drive into it yourself, you unlock the trophy UFO Xing for discovering the secret exit in Road Crash, which takes you to the secret level Hot Coco. Similar thing with the next trophy, which is to discover the secret exit in Dynamite, but there is a bit of a process to this one. I had to go down to this secret bottom area where each of these levels, you need to earn a certain amount of time relics in order to be able to play them. And some of these levels aren't actually even new levels, they're levels you've already done but they spawn you in on a different starting area in order to get an extra gem for example. So on this level, hang em high, I've already done it but going through this secret area it unlocks this new path where I'm able to get the yellow gem. And the reason I had to get the yellow gem is because on Dynamite the secret exit is on the yellow gem path. But let's quickly rewind because in order to unlock that level where I got the yellow gem, I first had to get 10 time relics. So I went back to the first 10 levels of the game and started to speed run them. And I actually got through those first five levels fairly quickly, even getting platinum relic on the very first level of the game. That's how easy it was. And on some of my first attempts, I did get the sapphire relic. And even though this counts towards unlocking that yellow gem level, I do need to get all gold relics by the end of the game to get the platinum. So I would just go 
back and try and get gold on my next attempt. And so after about half an hour, I got through the first five levels, getting gold relics on all of them, which did unlock me the trophy, buckle up boys, buckle up, for earning five relics. I still needed another five more relics, so I then spent the next half an hour going for levels six to ten and their relics. And once again, they were fairly simple and easy. And after completing the tenth level, I did end up getting myself the trophy, is there a problem granny for earning 10 relics gold or better so after that we had now caught up and i could finally unlock level 27 as i had the 10 relics and i was able to get myself the yellow gem and so i then headed to dynamite and took the yellow gem path and eventually at some point in this yellow gem path you are chased by the triceratops and you will come across one pterodactyl obstacle and then a second one straight after and if you get picked up by the second one you get the trophy getting carried away for discovering the secret exit and this takes you to the secret level Agapus Rex. And so I would have to remember when I was going for all the clear gems and all the time relics, the only way to access Hot Coco and Agapus Rex, the two secret levels, were to do these secret exits, so I would have to make sure I didn't forget about them. But for now, stage two was done and I was able to move on to stage three, which was to collect all clear and colored gems. And luckily for me, I'd already collected 15 out of the 47 clear gems and two out of the five colored gems. And so of course, using a guide I just headed to each level to check if I had gotten the gems or not. If I already had I moved on to the next one. If I hadn't I of course collected the gems that I needed to and just did all the levels in order that way. Of course in order to collect most clear gems you just have to get every single box in the level without restarting the level due to running out of lives. So that's why I like to get 99 lives done out of the way. So I pretty much never end up restarting a level because I have heaps of lives and of course I'm not probably not going to die 99 times on the same level so if you do end up dying as long as you've got all the boxes up until that checkpoint you can just keep on going and kind of taking it checkpoint by checkpoint which makes this process quite easy of course though some levels do have a second clear gem for example on boneyard one of the very first levels in order to get the second clear gem you have to go through the red gem path and at the end of it you are able to pick up the second clear gem and also some levels have the colored gem as the second gem you need to collect. So for example, high time here, I had to get the purple gem next. And actually in order to get this purple gem, I just had to go back to that same death route I got the trophy for earlier and complete it in order to get the purple gem at the end of it. And so then I was able to use the purple gem to get both clear gems on the level tomb time. And after doing this, I earned myself my next trophy, leave no gem unturned for collecting 21 gems. And so from then on, I continued on to collect the rest of the clear gems until I got to the level Tomb Waiter, which is where I would get the blue gem. And so once again, in order to get this color gem, I simply just had to get to the death route and complete it in order to get the blue gem. About half an hour later, I got to the level Flaming Passion to get the green gem. And once again, it was just simply another death route in order to pick it up. And about 20 minutes later, I'd completed most of the main levels and collected 31 clear gems and all of the colored gems and so at this point i decided to head back to the secret exits and get the clear gems for those secret levels and so first of all i got the clear gem in hot cocoa i then went and also got the clear gem on the first extra level ski crazed i then headed back to the level dynamite in order to take the secret exit to get access to agapus rex and to get the clear gem on this level you don't have to break any boxes so you simply just have to get to the end to get it and so by completing both the secret level Hot Coco and Agapus Rex, I got the trophy, giving 102% for earning the gems on those bonus levels. From there, I moved on to the final few levels, in particular the final 25th level of the game, where you need to have every single colored gem in order to make it through that bonus path to get its second clear gem. And so after collecting that clear gem, I now had every single clear gem on all the base game levels, but I of course still had to get the clear gems on those extra five levels you unlock for getting time relics. And so this is where stage four kind of comes in early, which is to collect all gold relics in the game. And in order to get all the gems, I had to get 25 of those relics. So for now, I would be getting those 25 until I could get the rest of the clear gems. So this is kind of stage three and stage four mixed together. And so I spent the next hour grinding out all of the time relics. Eventually, I got 20 gold relics and was able to complete the first four extra levels. 
levels, and by completing that level, I actually ended up getting my next trophy, which was bringing down the house for earning 42 gems. However, I still do have to collect every single gem in the game, as for one of the final miscellaneous trophies, I have to have 100% completion. So after doing that, I still had to go on and get the five final gold relics on the base levels, and honestly, it didn't really take that long before I had all of the gold relics on the 25 base levels. This unlocked me the final bonus level, Rings of Power, which is a aeroplane race as you go through different rings, and this one you can actually get the time trial and both gems done in the one run, as you can still collect all the boxes and you have to get first place in order to get both gems, and then obviously the gold relic for getting it in the right time. I was pretty stupid to start with because I completely forgot you can do a barrel roll to make yourself go quicker in the plane, so I was wondering how I got stuck in fourth and could never make it to first, until I figured out that you can indeed barrel roll, which allows you to go significantly quicker. And so once I had figured that out, I was able to get both clear gems and also the gold relic. After that, I then was able to take on Neo Cortex for a second time to unlock the secret ending to the game as I had collected every single gem. After that, I then just had to get the gold relics on the two secret levels, so Hot Coco and Agapus Rex. The gold, yes. Booyah, Grandma. Booyah. And Dirty Relics, gold or better. Let's go. Now that I had collected all of the gems and all of the time relics, I could now go back to level 1 and complete the final miscellaneous trophy. And so for this final miscellaneous trophy, I had to have 100% completion, and when you do, these random crash imposters start spawning around on certain levels, and all I had to do was simply shoot him with my fruit bazooka and get myself the final base game trophy. There we go, accept no substitutes, shoot the imposter, and the invincible crash bandicoot, collect all the crash bandicoot warped trophies, let's go, come on. And with that, the Platinum had been completed, but of course I was not done there yet as I still had to 100% the game, and to do this I had to complete the Future Tense DLC. And luckily this involves doing a miscellaneous trophy with this level and also collecting both gems on this level. You don't technically have to get the Relic on this level, and also it is so much easier than Stormy Ascent from the first game. And so once again we're using the Fruit Bazooka, and this is literally just for shooting one of the UFOs flying by in the background, earning the trophy Fruit Fighter. From there, all I had to do was collect the two clear gems and using a guide made this super simple. One of them was for completing the death route on this level and of course the other one was for collecting all of the boxes in the level as well. And honestly, this only took me about 20 minutes. This level so much easier than Stormy Ascent from the first game. Give me my... Yes, the future is clear. Seek and destroy again. That's 100%. I've officially 100% the trilogy. Let's go. Come on. So yes, technically I've gotten all the trophies for the trilogy, but as you can still see, I had one more gem and one more relic to collect in this game, technically, even though they didn't go towards the trophies, and for some reason I just felt like doing that to say I officially had 100%ed all the games, and honestly, it's kind of a dumb idea, I should probably should have just taken my trophies and left, because doing the time trial on this level was actually harder than getting all of the boxes, and it actually took me like half an hour, and I was getting pretty frustrated because you know I didn't need it for any of the trophies but I still stuck with it and eventually I got it done but I did only get a sapphire relic but I took it because technically that still counts as getting all the relics and I was done with this game. Of course though I still had to get the final gem and luckily it appears in the main area after you've collected every other gem in the game so that one was simple and now I had officially gotten every single collectible and 100% at this game and the entire insane trilogy. It's Crash Bandicoot! It's Crash Bandicoot 2! Cortex strikes back! It's Crash Bandicoot 4! 
So with that, the Insane Trilogy has officially been platinumed and 100%, but you know what that means, I now have to move on to the hardest game in the Crash Bandicoot franchise, Crash Bandicoot 4. Wish me luck. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and if you haven't already, I would highly recommend you go watch the first two videos of the Crash franchise as well, so you can see all the games in the trilogy. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as well. It really does help me out, and also, it makes me very happy, especially heading into Crash 4. It will give me something to smile about while I struggle through the tough, difficult levels of Crash 4. Leave a comment down below your favorite Crash game, and with that being said, I'll see you guys all in the next one.